In this tutorial, let's look at the fungi. This is another group of pathogens uh, along with the viruses and the bacteria. The fungi, by and large, uh, do not fall into the same category of uh, dangerousness or lethality of the, as the viruses and the, and the bacteria. But they can cause many different kinds of infection, not just in humans, but in plants and other animals, and can, um, can be a really uh, cause a, you know, lots of nuisance and uncomfortableness in terms of fungal diseases. So let's have a basic look at, uh, at the structure uh, and some of the diseases that they cause and so on. The basic general structure of a fungus, and there are a whole variety of funguses from mushrooms through to single-celled yeasts uh, to um, hyphenated uh, mush uh, fungi such as the ones drawn here. Um, but the basic structure is that many fungi have uh, long thread-like structures that are kind of cellular, but not technically cells, um, but are full of uh, cytoplasm and so on. These thread-like structures are referred to as hyphae, here, and coming off these hyphae can be found reproductive structures uh, called uh, fruiting bodies, which uh, are responsible for producing the reproductive cells, the spores, which periodically are released into the environment. These spores then can germinate into further hyphae. Um, so there's a cell cycle involved. So let's have a look uh, at some of the features of a fungus. So generally, fungal infections, as I've said, can be found in many different organisms, but they're actually, actually very, very common in plants and cause many plant diseases, such as rust in wheat, black spot in roses, uh, are common, um, common fungal infections. In animals, typically fungus uh, infections include athlete's foot and tinea, which are very similar, um, thrush, oral thrush, vaginal thrush, and ringworm is a fungal infection and not a worm infection at all. So they're often pathogenic in plants. Uh, fungi infections are usually transmitted by direct contact, so you have to be touching something with a fungus growing on it to contract it. Here's a photograph under, an electro, uh, under a light microscope showing these hyphae that I was talking about uh, a minute ago. So you can see these thread-like structures um, that make up the, um, make up the fungal uh, uh, body. The way that fungi get their nutrition is fungi are heterotrophic, so they need to take in nutrition from their outside environment. Many fungi secrete enzymes, extracellular enzymes, into their environment. Those enzymes end up digesting uh, the materials out here, and then these uh, the molecules that are produced get absorbed back into the fungi. Here's a diagram of what we've just been looking at. So again, we can see the thread-like structures, the hyphae in the fungus. You can see the fruiting body, in this case called a sporangium, with uh, the thousands of spores that are located inside. Um, and these are, as I said, released into the environment. And here's a photo of single-celled fungus called a yeast. Uh, these are the same kind of yeast that we use to um, produce uh, carbon dioxide via respiration uh, in bread making, in making um, beers and alcohols. Um, and so we can see each of these is an individual yeast cell. In some cases, these yeast cells are carrying out asexual reproduction, and you can see small buds being formed off the yeast cells, which will grow into new yeast cells. So this is a case of asexual budding. Most, uh, most fungi are non-motile, meaning they can, cannot move. Um, they have cell walls made of um, chitin or chitin, uh, and many are filamentous, that is, they have hyphae and they produce spores. The, the general life cycle of a fungus, so we have um, hyphal growth, so extensive hyphal growth. You can see this quite clearly on fruit that's been infected with fungus, with the, these thread-like structures growing all over the fruit, or bread, a bread fungus, uh, like penicillium, you'll see growing um, with these thread-like hyphae all over the surface. Uh, the fruiting bodies produce um, spores. The spores are released into the environment, usually the air, and the spores will land in various places where the conditions are right, where there's usually plenty of moisture, and there's some warmth, these spores will germinate and grow into new hyphae. Let's have a look at a few rather gross photos of some fungal infections. 
Here's a photo uh, showing ring, ringworm infection, often contracted from pets or animals that have been playing outside in the dirt and have picked up the ringworm spores. Uh, they get onto into the human skin and the fungus grows just under the skin and you can see this kind of uh, ring effect which is inflamed and probably was originally thought to be a worm under the skin but is in fact a fungal infection. We'll have a look at how this can be treated shortly. Here's athlete's foot or tinea which can end up um, looking terrible but is contracted by many people uh, through their life uh, because of the warmth and moisture often found between the toes you don't dry your toes properly after showers or baths, then the moisture left in here and the extra warmth because of the insulation between the toes makes an ideal environment for fungal spores to germinate and grow into um, their hyphae, which of course then the extracellular enzymes are secreted and start to break down the skin and you can end up with um, quite a sore between the toes. Here's a fungal infection over the back of a person, terribly disfiguring. Here's a case of yeast infection. This is oral thrush. Probably the uh, yeast involved is candida, candida albicans, which can cause very nasty thrush. And so you can see the yeast growing over the surface of the mouth. The treatment of fungi is generally relatively straightforward, although requires persistent treatment to get rid of all the spores in a particular area, but often involves a chemical cream or ointment that is applied directly to the surface of the fungal infection until the chemical kills the, uh, the spores and the hyphae in that spot, uh, and then hopefully you don't get a recurrence of the fungal infection.